Hello, welcome to another video. I'm starting to upgrade a lot of my equipment to USB-C ports and I decided to do some research to see what is out there and what kind of power I can expect from various devices. As is typical with my videos, I will do a bit of a deep dive into the power analysis of these devices and I have a bunch of USB devices to test so I'll be making several of these videos but this is the first one to get done so enjoy. The two victims for today are an Apple USB-C 20 watt power adapter and a Spigen PowerArc ArcStation Pro 20 watt power adapter. That's quite a mouthful. Both USB-C power adapters are 20 watt capable devices, but I am suspicious that these aren't going to work with the normal power delivery specifications. I think these are Apple proprietary. I will be looking at several different factors related to the power adapter performance and specifications. Let's get started with unboxing the Apple product. As usual, the Apple device has nice packaging. Easy to open, easy to get to the product, and cost-wise, the Apple came in at about $17.98, US dollars. We can see the UL mark on the Apple product, showing that it has gone through some safety compliance testing. The Spigen is a bit harder to open, but still mostly paper in the box. The unit has a flip-out AC plug, which may be an advantage for travelers. Cost-wise, the Spigen came in at $16, dollars 99 cents us dollars again 2021 us dollars we can see some safety marks on the Spigen, but they are not the marks that i'm familiar with though so possibly some cost saving there on a scale the Spigen weighs 40 grams the apple weighs 58 grams and for fun the packaging on the apple device weighs 25 grams and the packaging on the Spigen weighs 17 grams uh, the heavier adapter must have something extra in it uh, i'm not sure what maybe quality I did a video explaining some power quality metrics, so a lot of the terms I'm using are described in that video. Check it out in the link in the description or on screen if you want to dive a little deeper. In general, I'm just going to state what's good and what's bad. Let's plug them in and check out the idle power consumption. First, Apple, which is using 0.051 watts, 0.129 VA, with a power factor of 0.40 and a THD of 210%. A power factor of 1 is good. As the number goes to zero, it gets worse. So 0.4 is towards the worse. A THD of zero is the best. And as the number gets higher, the result is worse. So 210% is not very good. Next, the Spigen, which is using 0.055 watts and 0.135 VA with a power factor of 0.38 and a THD of 220%. Slightly worse than the Apple, but pretty much the same. I went ahead and gathered some statistics for the remaining test points, and here's a table showing the overall results for each of the power supplies. Wow, look at that. They're essentially the same on the power quality side. One note is I was only able to get 15 watts out of each of these devices. The 20 watt rating appears to be an Apple only power delivery specifications. So these adapters will not deliver 20 watts into a non Apple device or devices that can't emulate that specification. The Spigen makes claims on its Amazon webpage about being able to charge with PD 3.0, but it's clearly not compatible with this technology. Um, neither would communicate with the quick charge power delivery system, so the 100% load case is emitted in both cases. The quick charge protocol is the standard that allows USB devices to negotiate for higher voltages and therefore deliver more power to devices. Both devices will charge at 15 watts with a device that can handle that, though. The Spigen also has claims of GAN technology on the web page, and I seriously doubt that claim. And in looking at the nearly identical performance to the Apple, I can see these adapters using the same switching technology inside. It is most likely the blue LED that is using indium gallium nitride technology, so this is just marketing. The Apple adapter doesn't make a lot of weird marketing claims on the web page. It's pretty clear this device can charge other devices, but to get the maximum power output the 9 watts and 2.22 amps mode you need a compatible Apple device probably an iPad the next thing to note is depending on what kind of power strip or wall plug you're using you may or may not be able to fit more than one of these adapters next to each other in a typical vertically laid out power strip the Spigen blocks the adjacent plugs in a horizontally laid out power strip the Apple blocks the adjacent plugs so neither is really a win in this case, but they are just different. Um, in general, the Spigen is a bit smaller for travelers, so this may be an advantage. Uh, the Spigen's small LED indicator to let you know that it's on can be looked at as a plus compared to the Apple, which has no indication. Or 
the Spigen just has to go on for the uh, marketing thing and put GAN on the box. So in summary, in terms of power quality, both of these are about the same. Neither adapter can power devices other than Apple beyond the 15 watts, so be aware of that. Apple has a slight edge on the lower end, and the Spigen has a slight edge on the higher for efficiency. In terms of overall build, you could swap between these adapters with little to no difference to the end user. Thanks for watching. The best way to help creators like me is to share our content with others. Join me for another video in the near future, and as always, like and subscribe. Oh, I have another adapter to add to the list, specifically a 15 watt rated device and a 30 watt adapter. Oh, oh no, there's a lot of them. Stay tuned.